If you've been sculpting, you know there's a lot of brushes. So today I'm gonna walk you through what every single one of them does. Let's hop right into it. All right, let's start off. So basically, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into sculpt mode and let's just start walking through all of them. So on the left, you can see a list of every brush. I can pull this out and you can see all the names, uh, all the icons for everything and everything like that, uh, if you wanna read them all. I'm just gonna get a high resolution one because sometimes it's nicer. Cool, so first off we can see draw, which basically, see as you can see, it just adds like a slight line over here. So if you have like max strength, you can see it just has this kind of shape. So this is useful if you need to just like add some quick shape. Sometimes like this will be helpful, like if you're doing eyelids or something or like lips. Kind of a brush, uh, don't really use it that much, but it can be useful sometimes. Then we have draw sharp, which is similar, except uh, it's just sharper than the draw. Uh, you can see the fall off is just a sharper version. Um, and it's inverted. So if you can click this plus little button, you can see it's just, it's basically like a crease brush kind of. So you can see it's just a sharper version of draw. This is also very useful. I actually use this more than the draw brush. In my opinion, it's more useful. Then we have clay, which is a bit of an odd brush. You can just, just let me just drag up my, so it just kind of like adds on a layer of material onto it. You can get some weird results, but it can be pretty useful if you just need to add some quick like thickness to your model very quickly. Then we have clay strips. Everyone knows about clay strips, but it's basically just a straight line. Very common brush, I use this a lot. Uh, it's not the greatest, I'll probably actually replace it with some other, other ones, but why not, it's pretty good. Then we have clay thumb. So this is also, this is a very weird one. So you can kind of just like, you start just like moving, kind of just like creases it in and yeah. Very odd brush, bug out quickly, but don't know when you'll use this, but you can. Layer, very similar to the clay brush, uh, but literally just adds one layer on top of your model. It'll copy like the exact same shape, just like this. Uh, inflate, kind of in its name, it just it drags all the way up. You can see it just goes and adds like a big inflated blob on top of it. And here's a blob brush, which is just works slightly different. Doesn't work exactly the same as the, the um, plate brush, but you can use them kind of like interchangeably. Uh, crease brush, uh, it's another self-explanatory one. You just add some like creases into your mesh like this. You can also sharpen edges. It's kind of similar to the, the draw sharp, but yeah. Then we have the smooth brush. The smooth brush, uh, basically it just smooths out your model, kind of makes an ins name. Uh, if you just like go start moving, it kind of just starts smoothing out your model. You can adjust the strength of it. So if you adjust it here, so if I go like shift F to make this slower, and I'm in a different, br uh, like different brush, I can just hold shift and it'll work exactly the same strength as it is over here. Very useful. I don't use it too much. I'd most likely like replace it with scrape when I'm like, especially working on phases, but it's still really useful and I still use it quite a lot. And flatten, which will basically, um, I'll show you here and I'll flatten you can see it kind of like gets a little bit of an odd result, but it does kind of like fill in, kind of like aggregate flattens kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of odd. I don't really use as much, much, but it's up to you. Fill, so we can just fill in this little gap. So usually they fill, smooth, and like you there, so you kind of like fill in any unwanted gaps or something like that. Scrape brush, also a very useful one. Uh, it kind of just like, it, it's kind of what you'd expect flatten to be. It kind of just starts removing material, whereas flatten kind of like flattens everything out. Um, so you can see if you just start going, you can start flattening, you, well, you're like scraping away at your mesh. So you can kind of just carry on going like this. Then uh, you have multi pin plane scrape. Bit of a weird one, but you can kind of just like, if you have an edge like this, it's a bit odd. Um, but sometimes it can be useful. Uh, not too much, but it depends from time to time. Cool. Then we have the pinch brush. Yeah, it kind of does like this. It's kind of similar to like a crease brush, except just pulls in geometry. So you can see we have a very big cluster in this area right now. Then we have grab, which is also another self-explanatory one. Dra uh, drag your mesh around like this uh, in like the radius. The bigger the radius, the more mesh you can grab at the time. Elastic the form, it just works slightly different to the grab. It's just how like the weights and stuff of it. You can see it just works a bit differently. So kind of like, it has like a wider fall off of the brush. Snake hook is basically one that just pulls off like this. If you have a uh, dynamic topology on, it will extrude a properly uh, thing. So you can see like this. So this is kind of useful if you just need to quickly 
add like a little horn or something like that. But yeah, that's just the snake hook brush. Then we have thumb, which also is just like a very similar to the grab brush, um, but you can kind of just slide the, mod the, the sculpt like this. Okay, pose brush. It's just very useful, especially with characters when you're sculpting them. Um, you can see here, if I just like have this little thing that we extruded out, I can kind of just rotate it all like that. Uh, so if I make it smaller, you can see now it works less. So the size of the brush, how long this little white line is, it kind of ex uh, shows how much of it you're going to move with when you move your brush. All right. Then we have the nudge brush, which kind of just, oh wait, wait, nudge. So you kind of just, if you drag up the strength, you can see you can kind of just like move stuff around. Not really useful one, but sometimes you can find a niche use for it. Rotates, obviously in the name. Or you can rotate a, your whole model like this. So if you want something to just like rotate a little bit, pretty useful. So you can just like slide relax. That's to kind of like with your topology. So you can see if like, if I go like start pulling a lot of geometry in here, so you can see it's kind of like bunched up together. Then I go slide relax and you can see you can kind of just start moving the geometry and like pulling it out. Or if you want to pinch it in a specific area, you can kind of just pinch it all in like that with the slide relax boundary okay we're going to need a different model to sort this out so if i go select it you can see this bottom edge highlights right now so basically all the stuff right now if you just drag you can see you can kind of rotate like pan around this whole thing so if we go up and down you can kind of just do it like this um and this is dependent on the size of your brush so you can see this little white line so if i make this bigger you can see it does it more uh and if i make it smaller it does less okay and then if you go up to the setting, uh, this little, the toolbar, uh, you can see it has a bunch of settings over here, these three. So you can choose geometry or class simulation, you can change it to bend, grab, uh, so on and so on. So you can see you can just grab like this whole thing. Uh, you have expand, which will basically just like take it down. Uh, you have inflate, go in and out. Uh, you have twist, twist it like that. And then you have smooth, which will just take it in like that if you just hold down. All right, so I'm going to change it back to bend. And then you can see the boundary fall off. So I'm going to go brush radius. And you can see we have it like this. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. So you can just do that on like an individual thing. But also what you can do is you can loop. And now you can see, uh, I mean, loop and invert. Now what this does is you can see we have like a bunch of them now. So we have it like there. So we can change like the size of our brush like this and yeah i'll leave a link to a video explaining all of this uh yeah cool then we have cloth brush also another very useful one all it does you can select it you have a couple settings over here but you can see if i just start dragging you can see it starts like simulating kind of like cloth uh you can change the kind of like simulation as leave it for now drag pinch point you have a bunch of different settings you can kind of like use to create different effects for your cloth uh you have like radio or plane so you can kind of do it like there uh, grab, so you can see like there, try out the different ones and get something that looks pretty nice. I mean, already this is looking pretty cool. Cool. Simplify. This only works when you're uh, using dynamic topology. Uh, you can see uh, if it, if you have like a specific number, it will kind of like apply. So if I have the, 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 the so dynamic topology on, you can see now this is what happens. Um, that's literally the only reason it's here. And if you're in using remesh, then there's no point in it. All right, next one, let's go to mask. Very useful brush, I use it all the time. Basically a mask is kind of like, uh, you stop drawing, you can see it like starts adding this black to our sculpt. And now what we can do, if we go to another brush, you can see we can't affect uh, where this black mask is. You can see like this. You can see, just leave that part alone and we can't change it at all. If you want to invert it, you can just press like control R and then just work on this. So like if you grab, you can see we can just grab this specific area. We can't grab anything else. You can see we just can't change it at all. Very useful brush. If you want to clear it, just press Alt and M. Then we have draw face sets don't work when you have dynamic topology on. Um, but you can see we can start drawing and it'll kind of just select like a part of the mesh like this. Um, I don't even know how to use these properly. Uh, but we probably found a video on how to do these. Probably should learn myself. So maybe I'll do a video on that sometime. I don't know. Next off, we have multi-res displacement eraser. 
So basically what happens is if you have a model, so if I go add like a, let's go add a, and I go add a multi-resolution multi modifier like this and press subdivide or well, once or twice. Uh, and I go like, I don't know, drag this out. What happens with this is it basically will try to take it back to the original shape that you have right here. Um, so whatever changes you make to this, you can go like change it around. Um, you will go back here and it will start trying to change it back to the default, or like what it is underneath this multi-resolution. Then you also have this brush, which is the multi res displacement speed and smear so basically if you go like drag this out go click on this one you can kind of see it just like drags it around yeah, kind of a useless brush but sometimes you can find something useful then you have these two which is just for painting you could look up some videos how to do this i'll try for seeing if i can leave them down below um cool then we have a bunch of like other miscellaneous ones uh box marks um so you can see it just like drag it and it masks your thing. You also have, if you drag down, you can see lack of mask like this, uh, or you can have the line mask like that. Okay. Then we have the box hard, I believe. Yeah, box hard. So we'll just hard the geometry like this. Um, and then I'm pretty sure it's just Alt H and it undoes it. Uh, well, re uh, also brings it back. Cool. Then we have this one, which is the box face set, which like you just drag and it will add a face set to that box that you just drew. All right, and then we have the box trim. This will get rid of part of your mesh. I think it'd be, so you can see like this, and you can see it just cuts away like that. So if you want to quickly remove part of your mesh, box drag and do it like this. And then we have lasso trim. So basically same thing. You can just like cut away uh, like that. It can lag a bit, but yeah. Then we have the, uh, what, limited segment, drag, uh, and I'll just cut away almost the same thing um, as the uh, lasso trim. Cool. And uh, it just works better and it adds some like topology here. Cool. Then we have the last couple ones that are kind of weird and don't do much and don't really need to be here. Mesh filter, you can kind of just like drag it from side to side. Why not? Uh, you kind of just have like a bunch of the settings sharpen. I don't know, inflate, inflate it, so on, so on. Just kind of add around some random settings. So I guess, yeah, why not? Um, then we have the cloth, which will basically, you can just go like, so like there. It's actually kind of cool. You can just go, we, okay, what is wrong with those eyeballs? Um, yeah, so that's the fun of some of these brushes. So you can kind of just use some simulations. Uh, and then we have color filter. This will basically work with, yeah. Uh, and then we have edit face sets. So if you have your face set set up, you can do it. And then mask by color, which doesn't really work that well. Yeah, that is every sculpting brush. Hey, make sure to check down below for my Discord if you want to chat to other people about sculpting. Or click on this video on the basics of sculpting.